Hello again. This is going to be a collection video. This is going to be my entire collection of machetes. Now some of these you could possibly argue aren't really machetes. Uh, to me they just seem close enough to a machete or something that you could use as a machete even though you might not personally think they are. But to me I consider them a machete. I'm going to start off by saying that I don't actually have these for any reason in particular. It's just because I like collecting knives and really a machete is a type of knife. Uh, I like all kind of blades to be honest. Everything from little pocket knives, Swiss army knives, slip joints, log knives, axes, machetes, swords, woodworking tools as well, chisels and planes. I just like blades all together. Um, so this is my machete video. I've have, I have used a couple of them, but um, I've never really been in a situation where I've needed to use a machete. I mean, I've used them once or twice camping, but that's not something I do very often. That said, I'm hoping to get out this year and do some more camping and take a couple of machetes with me. I'll probably take uh, either this one or this big one here, hopefully, just to try it out, but I don't really have any real reason to use them. And it's not like I can use them in my own back garden either because there's literally no plants there. And uh, there's a lot of houses around me that can see right into my garden. And I live right next door to a primary school. So the last thing that I want is for me to be outside swinging a machete for someone to absolutely shit the pants and phone the police. And to be honest, in today's society, that's highly likely. So I just keep these in the house, I just keep them in the cupboard or... This one actually just sits on my TV unit in front of my telly as a display item. It's just a cheap one. Uh, this is the Lasher Cookery Machete. Uh, this was bought from, where was it, Springfields, the code UK for about £8. And that's a fairly solid machete there for that. Um, I suppose with that in mind, I may as well show you the other one I bought at the same time. This is the Anglo Arms. 23 and a half inch bowl machete. Now this is probably my second favourite machete of them all. It's got quite a long blade, I think it's about 17 inches on the cutting edge with a wooden handle. It's fairly well made. Um, I'm not really going to get into too much specs because most of these I've not actually done videos on yet. Yeah, that Lasher cookery machete I have but the rest I haven't. Not, I'm, st I'm still not sure what that handle is, I think it's walnut, but um, this is a cheap Chinese made thing, in fact half of these are to be honest, uh, by Anglo Arms, but it's, it's quite quite heavy, quite long, um, and dare I even say kind of intimidating, that said I don't think you should use these as weapons, I think you should have them just for collection and um, work use really, bushcraft that sort of thing. And uh, to be honest, if you have something like this for the intention of hurting someone, I think you're a sack of shit anyway. Um, I'm not going to shy away and say that um, criminal gangs in the UK are using knives like this, which obviously I think is awful. I think knives should be used as tools, not weapons. Um, moving on from that, this here is probably my number one favourite. Now, this is not a leather sheath. This is some sort of cheap plastic. It's meant to look like leather. It's poorly put together, in fact it's already cut with the machete. Um, this is the Tramontina Bolo machete and as you can see there, uh, made in Brazil. Uh, this is my favourite for two reasons. One of them being, my girlfriend gave me this for Christmas, so obviously it's special in that regard. Um, I think I'm doing quite well if my, my girlfriend's giving me machetes for Christmas. Um, but it's a Bolo machete as well. Which is, you know, that, that bolo shape, by far, that's my favourite shape for a machete. And when you talk about machetes, this is what comes to my mind. And I think this is what comes to most people most people's mind. Now, these are, you can, you can find these on Heine Haynes for about, what, £12? That's a fairly solid little machete um, for £12. This sort of thing I could see being great for in the garden or... Um, in an agricultural setting, working on a farm, that sort of thing, forestry estate. Um, I mean, it's, it's fairly well ground. I wouldn't quite say it's sharp, but certainly not razor sharp. And if you have a look at the tip there, um, it's sharp up until about here. 
and then the rest of the section is completely unground. I don't know why that is, if that's for maybe a safety reason, to stop it, to, to make it more difficult to stab with. I mean, it's made in Brazil and don't they have a bit of a problem with um, people hacking each other up with machetes over there? I, I think they do, I don't know. Uh, so maybe that's what that's for. That said, that's not really, I mean, if someone's attacking you with a machete, uh, getting stabbed with it is the least of your worries anyway, I mean... Well, well anyway, we don't need to talk about that. I, I don't think you should do that sort of thing anyway. Um, so to me that looks like a Scandinavian ground, which is interesting for a machete. But as you already know, that's my favourite ground anyway. We've got a wooden handle, and I'm sorry to say, I do not have a clue what species of wood that is. It's riveted together, which of course I do like. The, the handle's fairly comfortable. It's quite weighty towards the tip, which I suppose you want for a machete. I dare say that would do a good job. Um, for use as a tool, I mean, not as a weapon. Of course, it would be an effective weapon too, but we're not looking at it in that sort of context. And of course, I did forget to say that this Anglo Arms has also, also got quite big rivets. So that's definitely my top two. We've already had a look at this one. It's got the polymer handle, cuckoo shape. Um, I see no need to take the stickers off. Don't see the point. I mean, when I, when I store them, I just have them face down anyway. So you don't see the stickers. I just can't be bothered to take them off to be honest. And who wants to deal with that stickiness when you take a sticker off? This is the second machete I ever bought and it's probably my sharpest right now. Well, my second sharpest anyway. Uh, Imacasa. This is the Imacasa Latina machete. Um, when we talk about machetes, I did say this style of bolo. Uh, bolo. Um, actually, before I get onto that, it's funny how both of these are bolos, but they're completely different. I think this is a true bolo, if you like. Um, the second thing that comes to my mind when it comes to machetes is, I think that's the correct name for this anyway, is the Latina machete where you've also got quite a big belly but you don't have that big curve at the top to give it extra weight. This is far lighter. In fact, I would say there's more weight in the handle of this machete. Again, we've got a wooden handle, uh, which is quite, quite similar to that. Imacasa over there. The Imacasa is, sorry not Imacasa, this is the Imacasa, that's the Tramontina. The Tramontina is miles better. Uh, the price of this Imacasa machete is about £10 from Springfield, which I think that's a good value for it. Um, it's quite thin behind the edge, quite thin stock. Uh, as is the Tramontina, the Anglo Arms is far thicker and this cookery here is sort of in between. This one I did actually sort of sand off the finish and re redone it with boiled linseed oil just because two handles should be covered in boiled linseed oil, not varnish or anything else. It should be it should be BLO and it's more comfortable now and of course it's got those big rivets. Although the quality on this isn't quite as good, um, didn't come quite as sharp but of course it was quite easy to sharpen, just use a file then um, some wet stones, move that cooker out of the way. Uh, here's my other, one of my other uh, machetes, this is a, another cookery. This is the Gerber cookery machete, which one specifically, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I got this as, I got this in a three pack, it was this machete, the Gerber Freeman Guide fixed blade I think it's called, and their retractable bone wood saw. This is probably the best sheath of them all. And you've also got these D-rings on the sheath as well as the, the belt loop. These D-rings on the top and bottom to put a strap on so you can carry it over your back. So that's certainly a plus side if you're going, you know, walking far away or you're going camping or bushcrafting. This is definitely the most modern of them all. Uh, this is really the only one you could take the handle off if you really wanted to. It's got Torx screws where the rest is riveted. So you could take that off, I suppose. I've never actually done that. Moulded grip. Uh, hollow ground. So an alright little machete. This is one that I actually did take camping with me. And it performed fairly well. I was just sort of cutting some uh, long vegetation. Don't remember specifically what it was. Uh, when I was out camping with my friends in the highlands. I just used this machete to cl clear a patch on the grass. Uh, to set up a tent. 
Feels quite comfy, it's a decent size machete. Um, a good bite in it of course as you would hope, as you would expect. It's funny because these machetes usually cost, uh, these Gerbers are usually about £60 by themselves. Uh, I got this from Blades and Bows, I got the, the three of them. And I think I only paid about £30 which is an absolute bargain. It really is a real shame that Blades and Bows had to shut down. Because of the offensive weapons bill really. Um, now we've also got this. This is really where we're sort of arguing this might not be a machete. But I kind of consider it a machete myself. I mean you could use it as a machete. Not as a grass machete but as a heavy machete. This one does actually have a leather sheath with uh, several rivets holding it together. Definitely a strong sturdy, sheath, strong sturdy sheath, but to be honest it's still crap. That's why. That's kind of not very safe. That said, unless you're hanging upside down, it'll be absolutely fine. This thing is quite heavy however. That handle is not coming off there. That is solid. And uh, I mean that's one hell of a fixed blade. Look at the tang on that. That's definitely a full tang. I mean there's no way in hell that you want to be able to break a knife like this. I've never heard of one of these being broken. And I don't know how you could to be honest. This is a British Army knife. Uh, I'm still I'm still unsure what the story with these are. Some people say they were issued, some people say they weren't. I don't think it's current issue however, but it's just called the British Army Jungle Knife. I know that it's called the Jungle Knife, but we've got a 7 inch blade on there, it's quite heavy. And you could definitely do some chopping with this. This is one of the only knives that I have that you really could chop with. I mean, if you're looking for a knife to put on wood with, to put on logs with, this would be it. I mean, look how thick that is. And this is one of those knives where the price really has rocketed. At the time, I paid about £50 for this, which I consider to be an absolute bargain for what it is. I mean, that's one big hunk of steel right there. Sadly, the prices have went right up. Good luck if you can find one of these under £80 now. Still, even at £80, and uh, made in the UK, might I add, with the government broad arrow in it, uh, to the MOD's specifications, even £80 isn't bad. Second last one I have here, um, this sheath is made of ashwood, uh, I made that myself, it doesn't come with a knife. The machete doesn't actually come with a sheath at all. This is the more a mini machete or fishing knife. This to me is a small machete. Scandinavian ground didn't come that sharp, but um, I've got a good razor edge on it right now. This is a quite a good knife. This is another one that I've take, taken camping with me a few times. I've used this to cut all sorts. Um, done it, uh, sorry, getting mixed up. Done a bit of wet on with it. Uh, knocked limbs off sticks, uh, off trees, that sort of thing. Even cut my dinner with it a few times. Good little knife. That said, I don't think it's full tang. I think you've essentially got some tang up to there, but it's not a heavy duty knife whatsoever. That could also be found on Springfields. The last machete I have here, you actually can't buy it. That's this one here. The reason you can't buy it is because I made it. Uh, this is my own homemade machete, I just made it here in my kitchen to be honest. Um, I always said that the metal cutting outside, I don't really want to use an angle grinder in the kitchen, that's probably not a good idea. But this is just a homemade machete. Now the metal here, that is just the, the metal from a chainsaw bar. That's all that is, I just um, half the chainsaw bar and just sort of drew the blade shape on it, cut it out with an angle grinder, put some beach handles on it. Uh, pinned it together, sanded it a little bit and gave it a little bit of an edge. Not particularly sharp, but it's not hard, it's quite soft. As you can see it's quite flexible. That said, I have sort of chopped it into a piece of wood a couple of times and it does stick. So, um, I mean it does the job as a machete just fine. I know it's not the prettiest of things, but considered I just made it in my kitchen and uh, the only thing I really used was an angle grinder over a couple of hours, I think I did not too bad. I'm sure I could do a lot better if I really tried. In fact, that said, I'm actually working on another knife right now. So um, yeah, I mean, it's not like I forged that or heat treated or anything. 
just straight up to the metal from a chainsaw bar. So there you go. That's it. That's pretty much my whole machete collection. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you for watching.